Adrenomatic Excel Carry Over Lead. Brought to you by the Shrimp Troll. to 1975. Game 81, Ohio Players at Expos. Welcome back, baseball fans. 1972-75 Carryover League. We got a series tonight in the American League North between the Ohio Players and the Expos. Ohio Players, the expansion team playing out in Dayton, Ohio, named, of course, after the band. Uh, one of the expansion teams to get the 24 traditional Major League Baseball uh, league into from 24 to 32 teams. And the Expos, of course, we moved them over to the American League, um, put them in Vermont, just down the road a couple hours from Montreal. And they're neighbors in the north with Cleveland and Detroit, of course. And we've got a series, now that we're uh, starting a, a division series today, the first division series uh, we've played on the schedule thus far. That means it's the best of seven. And I'm just going to go right to the overall stats for the two squads in the raw form, the uncompiled form here, just because it gives you a quick answer what's been going on this year. So, the Expos opened up with a three-game sweep over the Angels, and the Ohio players were swept three straight by the Texas Rangers. Right now, as we speak... The Expos are 6-0. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, 6-0 and the Expos, red hot start. If you follow the fall league that I play, which is a timeline eight years into the future from 79 to 82 presently, that Expo team just won the, the championship. And it would be really kooky if the Expos won another one in a different timeline eight years apart. But uh, as unlikely as that is, it is plausible at this point. Your Ohio players, unfortunately, still looking for a win. They are 0-6. Statistically, the Expos are hitting 261 and the Ohio players are hitting 257. But the Expos have a 150 team ERA. And the Ohio players, this is not a misprint, have a 662 earn run average. From guys like Vita Blue, Lynn McLaughlin, Rudy May, and Doc Ellis have been getting hammered. Let's take a look at the series thus far. Opening up in Ohio, Steve Rogers, Vita Blue. Vita Blue's not lived up to the big contract. Three runs in the second. Two more in the fifth. Two more in the seventh. One more in the eighth for good measure. And uh, anyway, 8-7. Ohio got some offense, but their pitching woes, yeah, doomed them. Doom. Game two, the best of the three games. Um, in this one, scoreless between Steve Ranko and Doc Ellis. A walk, a single in the top of the third. Mike Jorgensen, three-run bomb, three-zip. Uh, in the seventh inning, we get a Bob Bailey triple and a Ron Fairley single after two outs. That is all the scoring in this one. Steve Ranko, ladies and gentlemen, two-hit shutout. Four walks, six Ks, two road wins for the Expos. And of course, you know what happens in game three, another Expo win. This is a nail biter. This is a game between Rudy May and Dave McNally, acquired in the Kenny Singleton trade. It all happens in the bottom of the fourth. After an out, a walk, a strikeout, a single, a walk to load the bases, and then believe it or not, Ron Hunt hits a uh, center field X with two outs. It's George Hendrick. He's a 2-E-5 in center. Can't get his glove on it. It's a two-run double. You know, just more bad luck for the Ohio players, however you want to look at it. They get an RBI triple out of Gene Kleins in the seventh, but once again, this two-headed monster in the Expo bullpen, Bob Reynolds, a Tossin, if you want to call it, in the McNally deal, and Dale Murray closed this thing out. A 2-1 victor. The Expos, dare we say it, 
are going for some sweepage and a 7 and 0 start. My goodness, folks. And to try and to curb that from happening, the Ohio players are going to send Lynn McLaughlin out there. He was also acquired in the Vita Blue trade, giving up Al Downing and Don Wilson. 74, 16 and 12 with a 270 ERA and 237 innings. And your Expos will go to one of the original Expos from 69. It's still around here. Bill Stoneman. <laughs> 12-game winner, 298 ERA, and 251 innings in 1972. Arguably his best year up in Montreal. Lynn McLaughlin, Bill Stoneman, game four of a best of seven. Looking for a sweep. Let's get started from Lake Champlain. Leading off, it's Larry Lentz. 37's a K. Dave Cash, 36, triple, 1 to 12, 2 base hit. Dan Driesen, 4-4, four, four, flies left. Bill Robinson, Bill Robinson strikes out. More of the same. Bottom of one, Ron Hunt, 48, center. Jerry White, 38, center. And Mike Jorgensen, 4-4, four, four, third X. Third baseman today is the 3E37 stylings of Jerry Kenny. He surrenders a single with two outs. And it's Robert Bailey. 39, is that a walk? Yep, it is. One of Bob Bailey's 88 walks. Two on, two outs. Ron Fairley. 1-6. Homer 1-7, fly ball. And that is a long third out there. That would have been the dagger, you'd think. The way Ohio's been fading in this series. But we're scoreless. George Hendrick, 45. Flies to right. Jerry Kenny, 69. Center. I tell you what, the Detroit Tigers and Cleveland Indians are really rooting for this Ohio player team. They don't want to see this Expo monster run off to a 7-0 start and make this uh, swim upstream battle for traditional Major League Baseball clubs and, you know, the defending American League champs at least. Gene Kleins, 1-2, hit by pitch. Elrod Hendricks, he rolls to second base. Bottom of two, it's Lee Stanton, turning out to be a very nice acquisition. 48, skies the center. Love his defense. He's a 2-3 in center field, E9. And he hits 267, 11 home runs. You know, it's not bad to find him in, in um, free agency. Jim Nettles, 1-8 to walk. Gary Carter, 48, center. And Billy Grabarkowitz, 38K. You know, another thing to mention, too, if you followed the draft I had, the Expos were the team that had the 10 draft tokens at the end, which gave them the first, fourth, fifth, and sixth selections in undrafted free agency. They only selected one player because they thought their roster was awesome. I can't argue with them, folks. They're uh, playing uh, over their heads, top of the third. It'll be uh, Daryl Thomas. Daryl Thomas. 64, third X. And you got the four at third base, 4 a 19. Makes the play. Larry Lentz, back up top, 42, rolls first. Dave Cash, 612, rolls back to the mound. Bottom of the third. Dog will hunt. 2-6 is a walk. Jerry White. Well, let's do something different. Let's hit and run. Runner's got a steal on a hit and run. Runner rolls a six and successfully steals second base. So White swings through it. No big deal. Ron Hunt gets the second anyway. So White with a no-1 count will swing away. 4-4, four, four, third X. And we have Jerry Kenny down there again, 337. He kicks that one. We got runners on the corners. Playing back for Mike Jorgensen. 68 is a walk. Oh boy. And the bases are loaded for Bob Bailey. 38. Let's take a look at this Bob Bailey card. What a what, what probably one of the bigger under the radar baseball players of the 70s. He had some Magical years with power and walks, almost anonymously. And yes, he was an everyday player. He's got 610 plate appearances here. For 
An expo team nobody heard of. Could play third base, not very well. Outfield, not very well. Probably better off to be a DH if there was one in the early 70s, but it's 1973, so he could have been. What a year. 273, 88 walks, 26 home runs. Had a great 1970 as well. 3-8 is a single to center field, scoring one run. Jerry White, 15. He will not run with nobody out. Let's go for the big inning here. Playing back with the bases loaded, Ron Fairley, 47 is a K. Now they're going to bring the infant up with one out, Lee Stanton. Two sevens a K. Now they'll play it back for Jim Nettles. 35. Let's take a look at Jim Nettles' card. Interesting guy. Had on a couple nice years with some defense. Uh, on base. A lefty who at one time could hit lefties okay. Not so much anymore. Kind of struggling now with this card. But the Expos said, you know, we can, we can work you in a platoon. And bat you 7th or 8th. And you could probably come up with some really big hits for us, like this one. So there's your two out, two run single for Mr. Jim Nettles. Right on cue for the can, Cannot Do Anything Wrong Expos of 2024. Gary Carter on the corners with two outs. Batting eighth, 48 center. Behind Jim Nettles, Gary Carter. <laughs> Three zip in the fourth. It's Driesen, 412 pitcher. Bill Robinson, Bill Robinson, K's, and George Hendrick, 55, is a base hit. Jerry Kenny, 310, flies to right field. Bottom of the fourth, Billy Grabarkowitz, 63, first X. A 2E19 at first, makes the play. Dog, Will, Hunt, 58. Not the English race car driver either. Second baseman, Dave Cash, 2E22. Makes the play. Jerry White, 1-4, third. Jerry White, interesting that of the Expo outfielders from the timeline, he arrives before Dawson, Cromartie, and Valentine do. In this, in this thing, because he could play center very well. Top of the fifth, two, three zip, Gene Kleins. 2-8, grounds the third. Elrod Hendricks, 1-8. Oh, my goodness, folks. Let's look at a card, because you probably aren't going to look at Elrod Hendricks cards very often in my carryover league. But let's look at this one. Elrod, he's your typical left-handed hitting catcher with power that just gets into the league for no other reason other than those uh, distinctions. Does have a zero arm, could play first base for five minutes. Hits 208. He's above the Mendoza line. One of the two times in the last five years he's done that. 1-8, homer on a nine. Yes, he got it. Elrod Hendricks, home run on YouTube. That deserves some special appreciation there. And Elrod Hendricks, YouTube homer for all you folks out there. 3-1. Daryl Thomas, 1-9, one double one to six, two base hit. The Expos bring the tie run up in the fifth. It's Larry Lentz. 210 flies to right, and with two outs, Dave Cash. Short X. Chicago Barkowitz, who's a 4E44 at short, but he makes the play. 3 1 game, competitive. Let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. Okay, the Expos. Trying to get a 7-0 start. One of the best starts we've had in this summer league. Even though it's against pretty bad competition. Mike Jorgensen. 4-10. Center X. Out there is Hendrick. 2-E5. Remember he made that foible in game 3 that cost his team the game. Let me make, grabs that one. Foible. Bob Bailey, 111 short. And Ron Fairley, 2-7. Single on a 15, gets it. And Lee Stanton, 58. Second X, this is Cash. He makes the play. Ohio players hanging in there. It's Dan Driesen, 48. It's Walt. Bill Robinson, 3-6. Let's take a look at Will Robinson's card. Of 1973 was a Philly. 
would later play for the Pirates. He's currently an Ohio player. Will probably stay here most of this time. Because I'm not sure the other teams want him that much. 288 and 73 with 25 homers. Then he has a... You know, he's got a... He was a late bloomer. He came up early. Wasn't very good. Then he came up with this card. He's like 28 years old. He's great. Then he's kind of lousy again. But then he's pretty good in 1979 and 80 when the Pirates go to World Series. A really, really weird career for this guy. That's a two-run blast, though. We got a tie game in Game 4. George Hendrick, 37 Ks. Jerry Kenny, 2-7. Rolls third. Gene Kleins, 2-9 third. All right, bottom of the six, Lynn McLaughlin. Trying to survive out here. Jim Nettles. 3-11 flies to right. Gary Carter. 1-16 for the base hit. Gets it. Billy Garbarkowitz. 5-10. He finds walks on his card and the pitchers. Two on, one out. McLaughlin and Stoneman are both starter eights. They'll probably go deep in this one. Dog will hunt. 1-11. Fielder's choice. Shortstop. So we got corner runners with two outs. A little bit of speed at first. For Jerry White. 6-11 for Jerry. It's a roller to short, but unfortunately you got, oh, Daryl Thomas, a 3-38. That's not too bad. And he makes the play. Ohio's really been struggling with defense in this series. We've gotten to the seventh inning tied. And here's our boy, Elrod, looking for homer number two of the game. 1-9 just misses. It's triple. 1-10 double. Two-bagger, Elrod. Three homers, two triples in 74. You're seeing half of those today. Or a third of those. Or, or three-eighths of those. 37.5% of those. I don't know. I just a small, you know, whatever. Anyway. Runner at second. Do we have a pinch runner? Oh, come on. Do we need a pinch runner? Probably not. Not of consequence. Leave him out there. It'll be Daryl Thomas. 58, short X. Your shortstop is Grabarco. It's a 40 44. It's a ground ball C, so he got the run of the third when he juggled the ball. Now you got to bring the infield up for A Bunning Larry Lentz. 1 4, right B question mark. This is where we were thinking about maybe pinch running for Elrod. He's going to try it. 12. It's on a 12. He scores! Elrod legs it in there. It's 4 to 3. Dave Cash. 2 9, single. He was going to attempt a stolen base with two outs against the minus one arm, and he is out stealing. Well, got a little greedy there. Ohio players, their first lead late in the game in quite some time. It is a 4 3 affair. Stretch time. We are enjoying this fine LP by Top Drawer. Uh, Solid Oak, 1972 Psychedelia from, I don't know. I don't know where it's from. I really don't. I just like it. Uh, Song of a Sinner, big hit there. 944,000 plays. Well, all the other ones have like 20,000 plays. So people would really like this. We'll throw it down if everybody likes it so much, right? Yeah, this thing's pretty crazy, kooky, psychedelic thing here. Happening in the bottom of the seventh, Lynn McLaughlin with a lead. His bullpen is Tom Hall and three dudes. Just get the Tom Hall, the great 72 Cincinnati Tom Hall. Bottom of the seventh. Defense for the team with the lead, none. No, you got Orlando Cepeda as a designated hitter. Ike Brown plays a bunch of positions rather poorly, as does Jackie Hernandez. We'll leave everything alone, and we'll cross our fingers for Lynn McLaughlin to get the Ohio players a win. And even a win on YouTube. That would be really cool if that could happen. It'll be Mike Jorgensen. 38 to walk. Bob Bailey. 48 is sky to center. Ron Fairley, 48 against a lefty, pops out. And with two outs, it is Lee Stanton. 2A, we haven't seen the card. I talked about it. Here it is. Lee Stanton's 1974 California Angel card. It's moved through three teams now. It went from the Angels to the Orioles to the Expos. 
Don Baylor ended up going from the Orioles to the Angels, and the Expos said, we'll take Lee Stanton, because we like the two with a minus three arm in center field until Andre Dawson arrives. And it might be a couple more years before we hear from Andre Dawson, so in the meantime, let's go with Stanton. 2-8, double 108 is a single dot dot. Puts runners on the corners for Jim Nettles. 1-7, another walk. See, that's why they like Nettles. Walks on 7, 8, 9. That's a pretty reasonable on-base percentage for a 200 hitter. Base is loaded, two outs. He's not broken. He's a starter eight. And you got Gary Carter, the kid. Let's take a look. First year player, Gary Carter, a minus one arm catcher, a minus one arm right fielder who's a three, and he can play third base for 10 minutes. He actually does play the outfield against lefties with Bacabella catching. So we're util utilizing the versatility of Carter with his first card ever. And here he is, the Hall of Famer. Bases loaded, two outs. Here's the pitch to the kid. 53, McLaughlin rolls back to the mound. We go to the eighth. Bill Stone Man continues. It'll be Dreesen. 37, skies to right. Bill Robinson, 48, second X. Dog will hunt to 418, makes the play. And George Hendrick, 43, left X. Jerry White's a 2E12 in left field. Makes the play. Well, same conundrum. No defense to bring in. McLaughlin's going to keep on rolling. Billy Grabarkowitz, a walk and a K in three plate appearances. 55 is another K. Back up top to Dogwell Hunt, who has walked just once. 47 is a K with two outs. It's Jerry White. 37 is a sky to right field. We'll probably have Tom Hall come on in the ninth. It's a 4-3 game. And Stoneman will leave. You know, mostly not because he's not pitching well. He's just going to leave because his bullpen needs some work. I mean, this team, is their starters have been pitching 8-9 and nine innings all the time. So we'll get Mickey Scott in there to give him a look. Mickey Scott, is he with Baltimore? Yep, he's with Baltimore. Baltimore Orioles, they probably got 20, 25 of their pitchers in the league. I'm not kidding you. Like all throughout the league through free agency. Uh, of course, not all have Baltimore Orioles in the car. They, you know, because it's a four-year time uh, timeline. But Mickey Scott was 274 ERA in 23 precocious innings in 1972. He'll come on in the ninth inning. Jerry Kenny, ooh, this is a tough decision here. Doesn't hit lefties well, but he's a 3E37 at third base. <laughs> so I could use that defense because Jackie Hernandez is a 4E37 at third base. Decisions, decisions. No, I'm gonna let Kenny swing. <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm not going to let Kenny swing away. I'm going to let Jackie Hernandez get a, a plate appearance because he doesn't play much. Jackie Hernandez pinch hitting. 43, left X. Jerry White again, a 2E12. And Jerry White, the 2E12 left fielder. Oh, it's a lot of errors. E12. And that's one of them. And Jackie Hernandez finds himself on the bases for a rare time for the 188 hitter. And now you dug your hole with Gene Kleins. 66 is a double one of 12 base hit an RBI. We got a 5 3 game. Betting for Elrod will be Ike Brown. 39 for Ike Brown is a walk, and the Ohio players are pouring it on in the ninth. Two on, nobody out for Daryl Thomas. 110 flies left. Back up top to Larry Lintz. Oh, heck, let's go for the long homer. Let's go for the Orlando Cepeda here. Lando Cepeda, the second DH behind Ron Bloomberg on opening day in Boston in 1973. So he gets the dubious distinction of not being the first uh, designated hitter of all time. Here's the pitch to Orlando. 56 is a walk, and Mickey Scott is really struggling in the ninth inning. Back up top. You got Dave Cash going to bring the infield up. 57 is a bases loaded walk, and that's just about it. Yeah. 
Not a good day to be Mickey Scott. Dan Dreesen. 4-4. Four, four, center X. And the two in center field. That's going to be a sack fly. And with two outs, it's Bill Robinson. 37 is a K. Well, we got a 7-3 game. And the Ohio players, they're fist pumping. They're, you know, they're thinking, is this what a win is like? Can we win this game? It'll be Tom Hall coming on in the ninth. Yes, the great Tom Hall. Town Hall. 10-1. 261 ERA, 124 innings for the enormous red machine in 1972. If you follow any footage of that 72 World Series, all they do is talk about the red bullpen and how remarkable it is. Uh... Overshadowing the starting rotation, you had Bourbon and Carroll and Tom Hall. And that was a big reason why the uh, Reds took the big, bad Oakland A's to seven games. That great bullpen. Anyway, ninth inning, Tom Hall trying to get three outs. It's going to be Mike Jorgensen leading off. 2 7 is a K. Bob Bailey, 49 is a K. And with two outs, Ron Fairley walks. Lee Stanton, 69, a strikeout. And there it is, folks, your Ohio players. They just won a baseball game. Shed no tears for your Expos, who are still 6-1. and one. But even the every once in a while, the sun shines on the dog's butt, you know? Today was one of those days. Mickey Scott in the ninth inning. He actually gave up a hit. You have three runs. Uh, we're going to call one of those earned. He walked three, and he struck out one. Rather horrible line there. Yeah. And Stoneman has to take the loss. Gave up seven hits and four runs. And it was Elrod Hendricks dooming him from the start. <laughs> yeah. Just couldn't get, couldn't figure out how to get Elrod Hendricks out, and that would cost him. Tom Hall walking three Ks. Lynn McLaughlin, nice victory, six hits, three runs. There's some unearned, unearnedage here. Uh, one earned run, uh, seven walks. He survived that though, five strikeouts. One oh one nine oh one oh nine seven eight three six. Five five eight 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 five five. That is the first win. The Expos can still win this series, this best of seven series tomorrow at home. And we'll show you the pitching matchups for the remainder of the possible three games. Both teams have played the exact same number of games this year for drastically different reasons. So, do the numbers get any tighter? Well, the Expos are hitting 249, and the Ohio players are hitting 255. You'd think, right? ERAs, Expos, two. 581 for Ohio players. That tells the bigger story. Now, we're going to look at the rotation for the remaining, remaining part of the series here. Game five, it'll be Vita Blue looking for his first win. And he will do battle with Steve Ranko on short rest. And if, if he wins that game, then back in Ohio, it'll be Steve Rogers versus Rudy May and Bill Stoneman on short rest against Lynn McLaughlin on short rest. So that's what we have to look forward to. We'll give you the results of what happens at the end of this video, so stay tuned. Welcome back, baseball fans. Uh, I call it the gentleman's sweep. Here's your box score of game four. The 7 3 win for the Ohio players. McLaughlin, eight innings, six hits, three runs, one earned, seven walks. He survived that, five strikeouts. Stoneman went eight innings, seven hits, and four runs. Man, this guitar player is on fire, folks. Sorry about that. Just had to crank it up there for you. Anyway, game five. They call it a gentleman's sweep because Steve Ranko is on fire. Second start in four days, eight innings, five hits, a run. It wasn't earned. Walked, five, walked one, struck out five. 
And Vita Blue lost another one, folks. Seven innings, eight hits, five runs. And you know what? It's on him. He's just not pitching well. They're just hitting that card like nuts. And it's a 5-1 win for your Expos. All right, guy. All right, calm down there. Calm down there. 5-1 victory for the Expos. They win this series four games to one. They are 7-1 in the very, very young season. Thanks for checking this out, and we'll see you next time.